Peace and blessings. Just wanted to say it's um, Tuesday, May the 15th, 2023. I'm in North Carolina and it is raining like crazy outside. Storming. Thunder and lightning. What in the hell is going on in the world? The great divide, insanity versus sanity. I know we want to divide the world into religion, the Muslims versus the Christians, Christians and Jews versus the Muslims within Islam, the Sunnis versus the Shias, and Christianity, Protestants versus the Catholics. Blacks versus whites, gay versus straight. Everybody's against each other. Everybody is losing their damn mind. So I think the great divide is sanity versus insanity. Tune in to the Sean Spillman Show. The Spill with Spillman. Foman at the Mouth Podcast. The most controversial podcast is out. We don't duck any issues. We want all the smoke. We hope that you enjoy the show tonight. Tonight we are touching on an issue that is becoming a great divide in America. The The immigrant situation The migration, the immigration situation in America is out of control. I'd like to get a few people's perspectives. Tell me what y'all think when we get into the show. God bless. Well, that was my thoughts earlier. I've watched probably about 30 videos on this topic. I was going to go live, but I'll wait to do that with the panel probably this weekend. I will say, in all the videos that I watched uh, from the conservative twins, which are the Hodge twins, the Hodge brothers, to Anton and his great morning show, there were a lot of points that were made that I thought were very perfect. So what I'll do the next 10 minutes, 15 minutes is really look at Anton's video and just give my critique of his critique on the situation. Big shout out to him doing his thing. Speaking of feelings, uh, shout out to Chicago. Shout out to Chicago. Uh, currently, what's happening out in Chicago is is uh, the black residents in those neighborhoods uh, are pissed. They are pissed. The white residents in those neighborhoods, because it's a lot of poor whites out here. I know y'all don't believe it. I know y'all don't believe it. It's He's some telling poor the truth. whites out here that can't pay for their groceries at all. You thought that it was a race war. It's really a class war. I keep telling y'all that. Growing up, I knew it was a race war. The last 20 or 30 years, I've watched a shift to a class war. I totally agree with him that uh, this whole subject, not to get off the subject, about white privilege. Of course, white privilege at one time existed in America. Does it exist today? We'll leave that open for the next show or the next few shows of debate. I am of the opinion, if it does exist In most situations, it's very minimal. He's right. This is a class war. The Obamas can go places where I may never be able to go. Oprah Winfrey can go places. 
Bill Cosby prior to being arrested can go places. Rick Ross can go places. It's definitely a class war. I keep telling y'all that the overwhelming majority of people that are on public assistance and that's getting these social services look just like that. What? He said, wow. Hey, what? <laughs> Reading Super Chat shortly. White people, black people, they all in the same boat because when the money ain't right, when the money funny, you start focusing on other things He's telling uh, the that truth. ain't even got nothing to do. <laughs> He's telling the truth. I-, I was talking to Rita last night. I was talking to Rita last night, and I said, she said, uh, actually, she was talking to me. She said, "You, your attitude ain't right. You ain't been right. I know what you need. And that's cold word for she want to have something sexual done to her, right? She <laughs> want me to bust it down. <laughs> Listen, we grown. The kids are supposed to be at school, right? If they ain't at school and they watching this, then that's your problem as a, as a parent, as a responsible adult. She says, I know what you need. I know what you need. But it's funny because we got this running joke, right? And the running joke is when people money ain't right, they start focusing on all the other things and everything becomes so big. People get pissed because you left the toilet seat up. (laughs) Some kid's bike is in the same spot that it was every single day prior to that and all of a sudden, when you pulled in, you got pissed because the bike was in your way and it should have been out of the way and it should have been there. You get irritated at the dumbest, smallest things, boy. All of a sudden, your kids' grades ain't high enough because your money wasn't right when you came in. <laughs> when you get irritated, everything start looking weird. Everybody that is the truth. Pissed. You start holding people accountable. Man, let me tell you, I was so tired the other day. I held Rita accountable uh, for the dumbest thing ever. I was like, listen, I just need you to think ahead of it before I even get to it. She was like, what? (laughs) She was like, I said, I don't understand why you didn't force. That's crazy. He's talking about that. I'm assuming Rita is his wife. The other day I said I was so irritated, I was so tired, and I tried to be a gentleman, but I really did the same thing to my wife. I was exhausted, and I I took my negative energy and put it on her and almost asked her to be an alpha male, not understanding that certain things are my responsibility, and she does a wonderful job. I'm blessed to have her, and I hope she's blessed to have me. But I asked her to jump into a nature that's not really hers just because I was exhausted. You know, adulting and being a man can, uh, a responsible man can be very tiring. See that it was going to happen before it even happened. She was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. How could I foresee what it was going to happen? I said, don't worry about it. I'm going to go home and take a nap. She said, I know what you need. <laughs> She said, I know what you need. I said, listen, uh, let me go to sleep for a minute and let me think about it. And then we're going to come back to this conversation. I came back. I said, you know what? My bad. I got to handle this a little bit differently. I'm a little wound up right now. You know what I'm saying? Facts. A hundred percent facts. I did. I came back and I apologized. I said, listen, my bad. My bad. I can't, I'm, I'm holding, I've been holding black women on the internet accountable so much. I started looking for a black woman like, ooh, what you didn't did today? <laughs> and no, I was not evil. I just got off a flight. I was tired. I hadn't slept. And I had some business to take care of. But we good now. We good. We good. We good now. <laughs> Shout out to my wife. That understands me, understands what I need before I need it, and give me what I need in order for me to sleep well. You know what I'm saying? That's the that's the purpose of a wife. Stay peaceable. Uh, deal with me according to what I need to be dealt with. But anyway, let's get into Chicago, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Chicago residents is going through it right now. And they're going through it because y'all new mayor that just so happens to be a man and is worse than the outgoing mayor of Mayor Lightfoot, I believe it was. Let me look it up in Chicago. 
I hate to Lori Lightfoot. Wow. I hate to ever demonize a person or criticize a person without personally knowing them. And this is new for me, this whole podcast world where we do like we critique other people's lifestyles and other people's information. That's new to me because when I was doing the Foman at the Mouth DVD, when Israel and I were doing that, we were interviewing people, letting them tell their story. And so that's what I will try to always stick to. But what he's about to say is a trip. The things I witnessed uh, Mayor Lightfoot say, I was shocked. Beetlejuice is obviously and quite possibly uh, doing this community a disservice. Let's get into it, ladies and gentlemen. A hot debate tonight as Southside residents push back against plans to Southside. move migrants in need of shelter. Anthony Ponce has more on the heated discussion in Woodlawn. Tonight's meeting was packed with many people not happy about the city's decision to go ahead and open up a shelter for asylum seekers without their input at a vacant elementary school campus here on the south side of the city. Now tonight, the city presented many of the specifics for the plan itself, but that still seemed to offer little comfort to many. I am, to say the least, freaking appalled at this fiasco. That Woodlawn resident among hundreds who showed up to vent similar feelings about the city's plan to open up a refugee shelter at the vacant Wadsworth Elementary School campus. I'm especially concerned about loitering as well as solicitation that may occur on the campus grounds. Chicago police joined leaders of the Department of Family and Support Services to provide details facility, the 11 p.m. curfew, the 24-7 security, the no drugs or alcohol policy, and the process for residents. Now, let me ask y'all a question as we listen into this, right? As the city of Chicago, which is obviously in flux, I mean, the city of Chicago is in flux, and Chicago is not alone. New York went through the same thing. Uh, there's a lot of things happening. Can you imagine can you possibly imagine that they are allocating money and resources in order to house immigrants in a migrant shelter, provide them 20? Now, you can't even get security in your own neighborhoods. You can't mm, even get a, a police officer to show up because the community is not really, not really even participating in their own success. Think about it. You had an overwhelming majority of the people in the south side of Chicago show up to the community meetings. They don't show up to, to a parent-teacher conference. They don't know who they, they county treasurer is. They not at the, the regular meetings. But the one thing is for sure and two things is for certain. Y'all voted this mayor, city council members, all of your elected officials. It's your fault this falls on nobody's shoulders except for the people in the community thank you ap313 uh definitely gonna be reading that super chat shortly this falls squarely on the shoulders and the people in the community this is one point where i i would disagree with him and digress in another direction or i'm sorry move in another direction a lot of times politicians promise stuff that they don't deliver. They say what wants to, they say what they think sounds good to their constituents, right? This is where me and the gentleman and uh, Anton probably disagree. I don't necessarily know if it is their fault. I haven't enough, enough, done enough research. The conservative twins say the same thing. It is their fault. This is black people's fault in this area for voting democratic. Uh, voting in democratic policies and stuff as such. However, even on the right side, the Republican side, there's all kinds of people that promise stuff to people and they change up. Just my two cents. How many times do we hear about the fact that people don't show up for the for the for the local elections, but they show out for the national elections? The national elections don't even have even a remotely uh, as much impact as the local elections. But then when people want to get pissed, then they want to have a reaction instead of being proactive and doing the thing that's in their own best interest. Now that they're running in the Victim Olympics, everybody is concerned. They want to voice Victim their Olympics, thoughts. They okay. want to start thinking about it. They want to have a conversation. Because they about to put a migrant shelter, and let me tell you what's going to happen. 
Y'all want to know what's really going to happen? I'm going to tell you the uncomfortable truth, right? They're pouring millions of dollars into revamping an abandoned high school um, and continue to bring migrants over into the city. Here, here's the truth. Here's the skinny. One of the things that I look at on a regular basis is I do research. I do research every day. Sarah, don't be salty. Don't be salty, Sarah. It's your turn. And you know what's so funny, Sarah? I'm actually doing a Detroit story right after I do the Chicago story. So don't worry about it. We are equal accountability smoke giver. We going to get there, okay? So don't feel salty. Don't do that. You're doing the same thing that a lot of these modern women is doing, Sarah, and I don't usually see that from you in the chat. Sarah is saying, well, what about your city? No, we're going to focus on your city right now, Sarah. <clears throat> now, here's the thing, though. One factor that goes into it is that you got people that refuse to embrace their truly conservative feelings and thoughts and the ways in which they live their life. And so what happens is they embrace the same voting patterns even though it's not in their best interest. Now, another factor that goes into it is that there's a mass exodus. A mass exodus from Chicago. Chicago is one of the cities in which is losing residents at an exponentially higher scale than other major cities and states in the country. And so what you're seeing happen, what you're seeing happening is that now you see these policies continuing to erode and, and where you had a, a covering where there's a majority of the people that were paying the majority of the taxes and they were making a lot of money in all of these uh, hub cities, Chicago, San Francisco, so on and so forth, they were able to cover up all of the issues and still say, but we are a liberal city and we still good and we better than y'all, so on and so forth. But as people start to realize and we have social media and technology and ways in which we can communicate and take flights here and there, what's happening is people are starting to become aware. And the people that can get out do get out. And you know where that leaves the rest of the people? Because the overwhelming majority of the people, and this is why I say it's a class war, Billions of dollars have exited out of Chicago. Shout out to Luis. I'm definitely going to be reading that super chat shortly. Billions of dollars have been have been uh, removed from Chicago, San Francisco, Philadelphia, New York. Now, New York is different from Chicago because New York still got eight million people over in that bitch. So it's a completely different conversation. They can still cover it up a little bit more. But there is a mass exodus from these cities, which is also lowering the payrolls which also erodes how much in property taxes is being paid, that is the contributing factor with what you see in your community services, your schools, and so on and so forth, right? And so these sanctuary cities are largely going to be the foundation of what? These migrants and immigrants that come into y'all cities, you know what they're going to do? They're going to take over. They're going to win. They're going to win. They're going to wash y'all. So while you sitting here begging for people to do stuff for you, these people going to come in here with nothing to lose. Wow. Wow. Profound. Out of the mouth of an intelligent black man, he says they're going to win. They're going to they're going to beat the black community. Uh, we witnessed that in Winston-Salem. We witnessed that almost anywhere we go where the Latinos have a large influx they are like the black community of the 60s and 70s, and even, I would say, in the 80s. When I was growing up, uh, black people were doers. Black people were builders. Uh, right here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, if you look at uh, Winston-Salem State University or the black churches or during segregation, black people built their own buildings own universities, their own hospitals. That's a whole nother story in itself and why my opinion of why that is no longer like that. Um, however, the Latin community, the Latino community 
is a diverse group of people coming from Venezuela, Honduras, El Salvador, Mexico, all over. The thing that they still have in structure that a lot of Americans don't is they have a hard work ethic and they still have family. Now, of course, when you see second and third generation, people becoming Americanized, that will change. Why do Americans, i.e. in this situation, black Americans complain, why don't they get up and do something? Pull their resources together. How long has the Honorable Lewis, uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan be, been talking about this? This is not a time to beg people for what. Just do it. I tell anybody, whatever you want to do in life, just do it. Stop making excuses. But it is, it is to me, it is, I would say, America's always had issues. But to me, from my own eyes, my own experience, this administration, and I'm neither on the right or left. I'm more about issues. This administration, I have never in my life watched a administration that I think does things backwards as hell. Now, on the human spirit, I love my Latin brothers and sisters that are coming from all over the, the world wanting, it, wanting a better life. I think everybody should be entitled to a better life. Now, the little math knowledge that I have, who's going to finance this? Why aren't the countries that these people are fleeing from, what is their responsibility in the equation? Can America handle another 100 to 200, 300,000 immigrants? Can we? Where to house them? How do we vet people? How? It sounds easy just to say, let them in, let them in. The human side of me, I watched that Netflix series and it broke my heart to see families separated. It really does. But at this rate, this is a great divide. I thank you for checking out the Great Divide series. Uh, this is part one of the immigration crisis. The Great Divide to me more is... For me, it's based on insanity versus sanity. But uh, part one, we just really wanted to get into a Anton and his views. I'm going to keep letting this play out. I really like to keep my videos 10 to 15 minutes, but here goes. They ain't got no car notes. They ain't got nothing. They're going to come in here. They're going to get citizenship. They're going to be granted every single opportunity, and they're going to come in there, and they're going to work your face off, and they're going to take everything from you. On another note, just a side, it'll probably be on part two, part three. I was looking at some old laws that were passed. I believe it was H-85 back in the day in uh, Alabama. I think probably 11 years ago, something like that, where they were trying to get the immig immigrant workers out. And they were passing laws and they were arresting them and ICE was arresting them. And they all fled. And the white folks had to get back in those fields. Man, they would last Two to three hours. Two to three hours. Most American people don't understand what hard work is. I have a tree business. I have a tree company. The people that work with me and for me and myself, we work hard. And there's really no difference in our work ethic and the Latin uh, Latinos that do tree work because we go get it. It's because we have a work ethic. At one time, I didn't. So that was I wish I can I wish I can show that clip, but I'll do that next time. But let's let him finish. I'm over pushing my time. Here goes. And then you're gonna be sitting here talking about how you still need reparations. And this is the truth. Ed Hill says NY is a sewer. NY is an awesome city, it's just a certain parts of it may be a sewer. But NY is a phenomenal city to visit. And I might take a flight over to NYC uh pretty soon. They going to come over here and they going to wash you. They going to take your jobs. They going to take your opportunities. They going to take your whole communities and they going to make them theirs. This is the truth. It's to provide input. But for most here, it was too little, too late. They didn't even tell us. The residents. They did not tell us. Look at this white man. Look at this good white man over here with his leather jacket and a hoodie on. He fit the description of a man that can't move out of. I'd beg to differ with him. I think that's a light skinned black man. Let's go can't move out of Chicago. He don't make that much money, I guarantee you. 
us anything until the last minute. We will work to make sure that we communicate clearly with our plans going forward. A recurring theme. What about the areas exist? Look at that. Look at those tent cities. My wife and I went back last May to where I'm from, Washington State, and we enjoyed ourselves. And Washington State has a lot of beautiful people, but Seattle's homelessness problem is probably one of the worst in the nation. I would say it's worse than New York, San Francisco. I don't give a damn what the data says. I've witnessed these cities with my own eyes. I will say this. Seattle doesn't really have a homelessness problem what Seattle has is what's called an open drug use problem. Tent cities. Open drug use. And I said when I was out there, I'd come out of Bremerton or Seattle or Tacoma where I'd go, I'd see tents beside businesses. And law enforcement or the residents were, I guess, just wore out. And their hands were tied by these left policies, right? And I said to myself, damn, everybody talks bad about the white Southern man, right? And the Bible Belt. But would the South allow this? Would the Southern folk allow it to be an open drug use? Maybe, maybe not. It's up for debate. America has a great divide right now. Did you know that Chicago had tent cities up in that mug? It's bad out here in these streets. Being homeless. This is beautiful. To go in and get a shelter for people, to help these individuals come over here. What about the people who have been here for the last 20 years? The nope. work that we're doing for new arrivals is not detracting from the regular work that the department is tasked to do. Final cleaning and final construction on the shelters expected to be done by the end of next week, with the first 250 residents expected to move in on January 23rd. 250 the first of 250 residents is looking to move in on and you know what these migrants are saying we don't care about what you think about us yep we gonna protest we gonna get our status we gonna get our rights and we gonna come in here and wash y'all at the end of the day whatever it is that y'all think that y'all gonna have against me is nowhere near as bad as where they came from he's absolutely spot on 100 percent right there when you take any person that comes from a, a, a war-torn area or a drug-infested area and they get a chance to work, they're going to outwork your ass. We have become spoiled. We teach in young men, especially young black men, go to college. Why aren't we teaching young men to, to learn trades? Let's just look at one city, High Point, Greensboro. Let's take Winston-Salem again. How many Latino crews do you think go out a day? How many contractors for construction, building homes, concrete workers, tree workers, landscaping, lawn care? Let's just stay right there. Not counting electricians, not counting plumbers. Let's say you have 100 crews, 200 crews, 500 crews going out daily collecting a livelihood. Do you understand how much an electrician makes? Do you understand how much a tree company makes? Do you understand how much you can make doing concrete? Look at these doctors and some of these lawyers and not to take away from the profession. Those are great professions. But why are we not teaching our young men, especially black men or men, period, about trades? Let's go. It's nowhere near as bad as where they fled from. You know what the funniest part about it is? You know what makes it even more hypocritical? You know what makes it even more hypocritical? Not only did they vote in the people that's making the decisions to bring these uh, asylums into the United States, not only did they do that, they're not going to do anything different uh, moving forward into the future. It's not like you're going to change your behavior. It's not like they're going to make adjustments. It's going to be the same thing. All y'all doing is complaining. The city says it's planning for the shelter to be open for two years, but that they are hoping it can close before then. All Cap, let me see something really quickly. That's what we need. We need us a black woman on here. It is insulting that you would consider such action about a forgotten community. Look at all the people in line to speak. <laughs> 
none of you live in. Developing tonight, outbursts and outrage at a community meeting in... None of you live in. No, they're not living over there with y'all. Why would they live over there with y'all? South Shore over a housing plan for migrants. The debate comes as the city deals with a crisis of where to put migrants bust in from the border. Elizabeth Matthews is live now with more. Elizabeth. Corey and Don, contentious to say the least. This forum was a chance for city leaders to get input from the public about the old South Shore High School housing migrants. The city got their input. Oh, look, these people is protesting. They don't care. Man, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Because we need to move over into the next story. Let me tell you something. You know what's going to come? I hate to say this. I hate to say this. You know what's coming? You know what's coming next? You know what's coming next? Cars. What do you mean, Anton? What are you saying? The cars is coming next. That's where a lot of y'all going to be living it. Listen, you already paying a house note for your car anyway. One fifth of people are paying at least a thousand dollars a month for their car, including, and that ain't even including insurance, gas, maintenance, or nothing like that. Y'all gonna be living in y'all cars. Y'all. He goes on to make good points that he's saying that with the influx of the Latin, uh, the Latin Latino immigrants, that most people will be forced out of their housing. We see that everywhere. Listen, I appreciate critiquing his. Uh, story. He's a brilliant young man. He's very brilliant. I watch his show quite a bit. I watch Israel Mills. I watch Angry Man. Check those gentlemen out. Um, uh, big shout out to Fantasy Island Girl. She's got her own show. Check her out. We got some real interesting people on my team that are coming up that are phenomenal. Check them out. Foaming at the Mouse podcast founder. This is Sean Spillman. The Great Divide series part one immigration crisis, what are we to do? What are good-thinking Americans to do? What are just people with the love of humanity to do? What would Jesus do? What would Moses do? What would Muhammad do? What would God want us to do? On the human level, we have to have compassion. We have to have love. We should never get to a point where we think our physical state, our race, our religion trumps the truth. Let me say that again for you. We should never get to the point where we think our race, our religion, or our physical state trumps the truth. I'm here to ask everybody to search their soul. What does your soul say about this crisis and the practical side? We need to heal the world. That is true. We as individuals, collectively, a country, we need to help each other. But how do you help millions and millions and millions of people coming in when we don't even help our own? And when I say our own, I don't mean race. I have spoken the last few days to a lot of Latinos who were concerned and scared about the immigration problem. Uh, some of them have businesses, or most of us spoke have business. One gentleman said that contrary to popular belief, the Latinos are not united. Like any, any workforce, right? There's those that compete against each other. There's those that you know, like one person go gives a bid on a concrete job for seven thousand. Uh, Mr. Lopez says seven thousand, and Mr. Gonzalez says sixty five hundred. What happens when the gentleman gets to sixty five hundred? What happens to that guy who doesn't get that job? Just something to think about. We have to be practical. I ask peace and blessings over everybody. I ask that the mercy of God bestow your family. I ask that you have a great life in this life and the next. This is Sean Spillman, founder of Foaming at the Mouth podcast. You can also check me out at the Spill with Spillman, the Great Divide series, Immigration Crisis, Part 1.
Thank you for tuning in.